Hi everyone, it's uh, Simon Keeling here and it's Wednesday the 11th of January. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for your continued support. As always, this site is kept free of charge by the adverts that you see around the site here. If you see one you like, click on it, go through to the sponsor, it generates revenue for us and it also uh, shows the sponsor you're interested in them. Don't just click on the advert willy-nilly though, only click on it obviously if, uh, if you're interested in what that advertiser is offering to you. Um, now, uh, if you were watching yesterday, you'll know that um, I was talking about how this chart, which is the uh, seven day forecast chart, the temperature anomaly chart, was likely to be going into negative territory uh, over the coming days. And hey presto, look, there we go. Uh, this is the chart valid from Wednesday to Wednesday. That's from today through till next Wednesday, the 18th of January. And notice we've gone into zero to minus two degree territory across much of the country. So that's temperatures just below normal. Still holding up across the eastern parts of Europe, but just look how cold it is down here in Turkey, through Greece, through Italy, the Balkans, and across in France and Spain too. It really has been quite a chilly winter for some parts of Europe. We've got away with it lightly here in the UK, and you can see how things change over the next seven days. In fact, if you take a comparison here of the actual temperatures, this is the mean surface temperature for today through to next Wednesday. Look how cold it is across Eastern Europe, but staying fairly mild towards the east. But watch this area here, look by the following week, by Thursday the 19th to Friday the 27th, look how this colder air has crept in across much of central parts of Europe and across the east. Some real cold to come here and this confirming the uh, idea of conditions gradually cooling down over the coming days and weeks. Now this is the mean of the 500 millibar flow from two models, the ECMWF over here on the left and the GFS on the right. And this is valid from um, next Wednesday through to Saturday the 21st of January. And what it's showing us is the 500 millibar height field which is good for giving an indication as to jet streams but also looking at troughs and bridges in the higher parts of the atmosphere. And you can see here how both models really are lining up quite well as far as the British Isles are concerned. Above normal heights towards the southwest on the ECMWF and on the GFS, which is indicating good agreement between the models. And this would probably build high pressure out towards the west of us with uh, a cold pool here across Eastern Europe, which is gonna be causing heavy snow through much of Eastern Europe, including Poland. I think, again, there's going to be falls across uh, across Austria, Hungary, and Switzerland, possibly some pretty heavy snow to come there. But high pressure formed here, look, across northern parts of Russia, which is absolutely critical in this change of weather pattern. Across uh, the states, similar conditions to this big major cold pool moving in across northern Canada. GFS made more of it than the ECMWF, but the result is going to be the same, which is that Canada and the northeast states are going to become desperately cold over the next 10 days and it does look as if temperatures really are going to fall. Now what's happening is because we've got this build of heights here across northern parts of Russia what that's doing is it's pushing the cold air off the pole so it's actually nudging it down into our hemisphere so it's kind of just slipping that cold air off the pole and the cold air is coming south. Now as that cold air comes south it meets the warmer air coming up from the tropics and it strengthens this jet stream in the Atlantic which is going to be screaming across the Atlantic but you'll notice it's starting to show signs of a split. Now this goes against my long range forecast uh, which uh, was actually got the jet stream across the south of the country. We're okay up to this point, it's what goes on later that becomes of interest uh, as we get towards the end of January. We may see the jet stream split, we may see colder conditions lasting through until the beginning of February. So the actual result of my forecast is still right and that it's going to go cooler and uh, we could see a cold end to the month and start to February. It's the mechanisms that get us there that might be slightly altered. So, um, the uh, North Atlantic Oscillation today bouncing around neutral territory again, heading into uh, negative uh, after the 21st. Now that puts us into a weaker westerly flow across the uh, Atlantic. So certainly it's heading into that negative territory, although notice that each of the runs look are quite far apart. So confidence becomes quite low after about the 21st in January as to how this actually develops. North, the uh, Arctic Oscillation still bouncing around neutral before heading into negative territory. But look, massive difference now between the various different runs. And basically that forecast is next to useless in a way because of the wide variance in the spaghetti. Apart from telling us that actually things are changing. There is a major change again in the atmosphere. Now I don't think this major change is going to go to cool. What it might do, and please don't run away with this idea, what it might do is nudge us into cold for the end of January 
beginning of February. This is something I'm going to be watching very closely over the next few days. As far as temperatures go for the next few days, taking us through to the uh, 20th of January here, it's the red line you want to watch, that's the maximum temperature. This is for Birmingham, but it's representative of really the whole of the country. Notice how temperatures fall over the next couple of days, taking us into the weekend and the beginning of next week before they do pick up again as the jet just tries to blow in a little bit of milder air from the, uh, from the Atlantic again into the, uh, early to, into the middle stages of next week but notice how much look the blue line here which is minimum temperature notice how long that spends look below zero so we are going to see some frost and we may see severe frosts as well or more severe than we've seen for some time we could see minus four minus five quite easily as we go through uh, sat Friday night to Saturday morning and possibly again on Sunday morning too so certainly some frosty days are afoot as far as rainfall is concerned, well, uh, below normal again across much of the east of the British Isles and across the west too, let's face it, 50 to 70% of normal rainfall here. That's where the high is mainly going to be, near a normal conditions look across the eastern parts of Europe. And finally, let's just take you through uh, each of the days in step. This is from Weather Online, from the GFS model. And uh, this is from the 6 o'clock run. I just want to show you a feature on here. The times are up here in the top left-hand corner. So here's today. Look, here's our high to the south, low pressure up to the north. Watch as I run through this sequence. There's the cold front coming southwards tomorrow, which is going to be bringing cooler air across the whole country by Friday. Friday really is going to feel cooler. Here's the high building into the south, which is going to bring a, a slight frost Friday morning and probably a more significant frost look by Saturday morning. There it is holding on. So more significant frost, I think, for Saturday morning. Again, by Sunday morning, I think we've got a frost, particularly northern and eastern parts of the country. Too much of a breeze across the southwestern Ireland, really, for a frost to develop. But watch what happens to these areas of low pressure coming in from the Atlantic. They're coming in against the area of high pressure. Look, they're weakening. The high holds on into Tuesday, and it really is late Tuesday, Wednesday, before a break can be made in that high. Look, here it comes. This is the system coming through on Thursday, which will try and push the high out of the way. For Thursday, it looks as if it is going to be quite a wet day and wouldn't rule out the risk of snow next Thursday across the Scottish hills, perhaps even at low levels, and wouldn't rule out snow over the Pennines and the Welsh mountains too, if this were to come true. Now, it's after this that I want you to watch, because watch what happens there. As that cold air plunges into the Mediterranean look, low pressure forms across Italy. It brings an easterly pattern into the UK. It brings colder conditions into the British Isles. Now, the GFS model gets rid of those fairly quickly into the weekend after next look and tries to break it down into the Atlantic. But I have a feeling that if that pattern establishes, that could be a pattern that takes us through the end of the month and into the beginning of February. That would be cold compared to what we've seen. It could bring some snow showers in places particularly over eastern coast, southeast England. The west probably experiencing cloud and rain, but I think for many of us colder. So by colder we're talking three, four degrees by day, by night, minus twos, minus threes, perhaps a little bit colder. So as of today, I'm, I'm tending to think that my forecast can be toned down, at, or toned up even, if you can do that, at the end of the month, that it looks as if it could become colder from about the 23rd onwards, colder than I've been suggesting but still the overall forecast is basically stacking up about the same. Now it's a big big time in terms of weather at the moment and we're going to be watching it very carefully over the coming hours and days to see what happens. The real crucial factor in all of this and the thing that I want you to take away from this recording today is really to do with the uh, cold air, the, sorry the higher pressure across these northern parts of, uh, of Russia and Siberia that's pushing this cold air off the pole. This is really crucial and will have a bearing on our uh, on our winter weather or the late winter weather certainly through the end of January into the beginning part of February but of course we'll keep you informed. So thanks again for watching don't forget to support the advertisers if you can and uh, keep the sun shining.